And I love you all too. That's that's great. I love you too, Mom. <laughs> All right, uh, my name's Lillian Hughes. I am a sophomore at Northwest High School. When I was 12 years old, I used to think that I had weeds growing out of the veins in my wrists, that there was something wrong with my brain. It, wasn't wired correctly. I would look into the mirror only to see a graveyard staring back at me like I was attending a funeral for someone I never even got to know whose life lasted as long as it took me to write her name on paper. I wrote two suicide notes, one of which contained only, I'm sorry. Now I wonder if I was just writing her obituary, the one she would have wanted to have. Maybe I was just apologizing for letting her die on somebody else's fingertips. And I guess I was too late to realize that I was the one dying, that a part of me had already died and nobody had even noticed. And maybe that's the point. As long as you die quietly, nobody really cares. It was only when I got angry, when my symptoms became inconvenient for others, when I realized that I deserved justice, when all the words sharpened on my tongue that I became a threat. That was when I learned what it really meant to be a survivor, to be silenced. I wasn't supposed to talk about the ugly, about how I wasn't even in second grade, how he touched me in the same bed he slept in with my mother just the night before, about how I wasn't the only girl, how, there, or how the other was 12. I wasn't allowed to send him a letter telling him that there's a word for what he did to me. Instead, I was told to be kind, to forgive, to be sympathetic, or if I, was going, if I was going to suffer, to suffer in silence. I had to soften my words, to water down the feeling of a man's hands where they shouldn't have been, to make it acceptable. But I don't care. There is nothing poetic about mourning a part of me that is dead. I shouldn't have to choose between forgiveness and my own self-dignity. I can't keep digging a hole into my chest to make space for other people. I can't keep carving my entrails out in an attempt to make something beautiful to look at. At this point, there's not enough me left for me. All I want is to hold on to myself, to whatever part of me has stuck to my bruised rib cage. All I can do is hold on to these bones, this corpse inside of me, to embrace this death. And I'm 15 now, and from this angle, these weeds are blooming from my wrists. <laughs> 